What's going on, guys? It's Justin here with Summit Racing, back for another one of our live streams. And we have our buddy Rutledge Wood here with us to, you know, hang out with us for a little oh, bit. Guys. And, um, you know, we're going to talk cars and all sorts of other fun stuff. So what's going on, Rutledge? How are you today? Oh, man, I'm good. I, I just was posting that we're doing this on Facebook. Then the live broadcast started on my phone. So we're already off to a great start. Fantastic. Uh, man, it's so, it's so fun to get to hang with you. I know we're both into a lot of different kind of fun and funky cars and certainly you know i've been uh, doing fun stuff with summit for like 10 or 12 years now and i love that for so many of us that are into so many different projects whether it's you know putting an ls3 525 horse crate motor like we did in the back of a 911 or say working on your tundra whatever it is i love that summit is a place that has so many different parts for so many different people, because it also means if you go to any of the events, you go to the hot rod power tour, you know, Justin, you know, whether it's the Jeep behind you or the, you know, thirties hot rod for that you come in on. What I love is that it brings people together. That's one of the coolest things about this brand. Yeah. And that's our goal is to have something for everything you drive. So, you know, for your daily driver, pickup truck, your boat, you know, your thirties hot rod, your Jeep, Toyota, even like your dirt bike side by side ATV, we try to have something for everything. And you know, I'm I'm right there with you. One of my favorite parts about this, you know, is it's a car. Cars as a hobby is it's it's a conglomerate. So it doesn't. We're all into something different, and um, it's just fun, you know, talking about other people to other people about what you're into. You know, we're cars in general. It doesn't matter what it is, and uh, that's really the, the my favorite part about the community is you know we're all into something. It's they can be vastly different but they're all the same, you know, kind of bones and they all do the same thing. Absolutely. And because I think honesty is really important. Um, Steel City Caprice, Charlie and, and him. Hey, sorry, I was running late. I was just having a technology problem, but the guys will tell you I was here on time. So don't worry. But yeah, let's talk about some fun, uh, some fun stuff that um, at, we're working on. So yeah, what do you, you're building a blazer project currently, which is super. We we all love those square body blazers. Like that's um, absolutely you know, those are those are pretty, and they've got really really popular. You know, trucks have got really popular over the last couple of years. Like it was, you know, it was not cool to drive a pickup. Pickup truck was a work vehicle. It wasn't like a you know, pre, I should say not practical, but it wasn't you know a daily driver kind of vehicle for a lot of people. And now that's a lot different. And you know, you see a lot more trucks on the road than you did say 20 years ago. Absolutely. And I'm gonna. I know this is not how technology works, but this is my 72. K5 Blazer project. Uh, and I actually got this from a buddy of mine uh, on Instagram who I had met on the Hot Rod Power Tour, being out there with Summit before. And for years, he's out in Iowa and he would get these cool projects. I mean, they're, you know, the hard part about the more friends you make in this world with that are uh, certainly related to cars. When they get really fun projects, it's hard to not try to jump at all of them. And so I kept being like, no, this isn't the right one. This isn't the right one. Well, he ended up with this blazer. It had spent most of its life in Colorado. He got it to Iowa. I scooped it up from him. And then, uh, of course, first thing I do is go to some racing website. So I started looking, okay, what can I do? Well, we went with the 5.3 uh, Summit LS. So it's a 450 horse. Uh, and then I started looking around, okay, what other kind of stuff can we do? I wanted to keep that patina on the outside. Like that to me is what makes it so special. You're telling the story of the vehicle. So we, um, we did a two inch uh, tough country lift, uh, cleaned up the frame, put uh, steel it all over it, just cleaned it up a lot. Then I did a uh, gear vendors. Uh, that's a four L 80 E four speed in there. Rebuilt the transfer case. We did bear brakes. TMI, as you know, a great partner of Summit. Uh, I started looking at all the stuff they have for the Blazer. And, you know, it's so cool when you can recreate with some style and some function some of these interiors. And I think this is the fourth TMI interior I've, I've done. And because I do love plaid, I'll, I'll give everyone a little sneak peek. I put a bunch of pictures on uh, Instagram of it. But the cool thing is, you know, for me, I live in Atlanta, so in the McDonough Summit Racing is not far from me, so I could have gone and picked up uh, the black and white, or excuse me, the black and gray in the afternoon, but I went with the good plaid. Hi, there oh, it is. Yes. So, I mean, you know, it's just, first off, the seats are killer uh, to, to have some hold and some function in there. <clears throat> My 68 Camaro, 
the Tanner and I ended up having the same cars. And again, I built that uh, a lot with Summit. We called them the Evil Twins. I put those same uh, seats. I did the ones with headrests in that one in the 68. But man, those those Pro R seats that they make are so comfortable. Changed the vehicle a ton. Uh, so now I've been I've been kind of shaking it down. I just picked it up last week at the Kenwood Rod Shop. My friend Randy still builds all my stuff. We did a show together called Lost in Transmission in between seasons of Top Gear. And I, you know, I do, it's funny, I think because I've, I've been a partner and ambassador for Toyota for so long, I think that people thought I must only like Toyotas, but turns out I drive Toyotas every day. I build on those, I wrench on them, but turns out I love everything. So yeah, you know, I got a, I got a weird collection of stuff. Tanner calls it an accumulation. He says, I'm not a car collector. I'm an accumulator. I think that might be, that might be. I, I identify that, that hits me right in the soul. Um, you know, I'm the same, same way. I just like stuff. You know, I like the daily GMs. I like to wheel Toyotas and Volkswagens. You know, I like to beat that stuff up in the woods. And then, you know, I ride Austria. I like KTM dirt bikes, like Austria. <laughs> so it's just, I'm a, I'm a Honda, I'm a Honda man through and through, but, uh, you know, I have no, no brand affiliation, I should say. Like, I like, same with you. I like everything. It doesn't, it just has to run. Anything that makes noise ha- has my interest. So, um, right. I've been on a um, a hot air balloon kick lately. I, I want to buy hot air wow. balloon in the worst kind of ways. And um, my <laughs> have friend you been in I'm, one. Oh uh, no, I've been in the good. <laughs> <year>. <laughs> Why would you want to buy one if you haven't even been in one? Uh, dude, there's something about floating with no actual control that just puts a smile. Or home built airplanes. Like my Facebook marketplace is is oh. totally destroyed because it's all ultralights hot air balloons and home built airplanes and i'm just like this is not what i'm looking for but it's a sign that you know just like the blues brother said it's a sign we have to go it's a it's a sign from god justin do you have google at the house where you are because you can look up the 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 success rate and failure rate for home built aircrafts is a stat that you can find fairly easily so i just want to encourage you to maybe just take a hot air balloon ride with a professional before you go in on it just food for thought well, that was like when I was shopping for one. So I found it was before I went and bought my new dirt bike and I had a, a pocket full of cash. I find this hot air balloon and I message the lady. I'm like, 10, 10 grand. I'll come get it right now. Like I will be on my way to your house. She wouldn't work with me on the price at all. So, um, <laughs> so then I start researching. I'm like, how hard can this be? Do you just go get like, go um, just take a class like a boater's license? It is not... It is not that simple. And not only do you need a pilot's license, but then you have to get some kind of certification on top of that to operate a hot air balloon. So I was like, oh, we're going to be outlaw hot air ballooning. Like, you know how much fun that would be to land here in the summit parking lot? Like, just show up. That's a presumption that you'll be able to land it for the record. I, I agree. It would be a lot of fun. You could start with the tether. You know, there are people that will bring a hot air balloon to an event and they launch it and then they just bring it right back down. Maybe start with that, you know? Yeah, it, you got, I, I suppose you have to walk before you run, but yeah, my, my pro, you know, I like to jump. I just like to, um, to, to jump into things. I'm a head first kind of guy. Right. <laughs> I'm getting that feeling right now. That's fantastic. Well, here's my latest um, marketplace buy. I bought my old 96 Roadmaster station wagon back. The guy I sold it to, it was 2016. We built that one on Lawson Transmission. Uh, again, some of a great partner for that show, too. Uh, it's got uh, it's lowered on 18s. We did, I think, Hotchkiss suspension all the way around it. That one has the LT1. We painted it. It's like a Lamborghini. I think it's called Tiesto Gray. And then I did a barn wood uh, wood grain down the side. So it's like a little lighter kind of a grayish wood. And I sold it to this guy, uh, Michael in 2016 and a couple it was probably six months ago he's like hey man i'm gonna sell the car if you want it let me know and i was like oh oh, those cars have gone up in value i think i do want that and so he gave me a shot i bought it back it showed up last week uh it only has seven thousand more miles on it and it looked perfect the shipping dude put it too close to another car on the trailer so it rubbed there's like a, a patch like this where it rubbed the paint off the bumper and that one, that one breaks your heart. She's like, this car's in such good shape outside of that. Um, and the outside door handle, driver's door handle won't work. I think it either got like someone popped it just right and it slung the rod off or uh, something else broke underneath there. I got to take that apart. But 
man, I'm excited to have that stuff back. You know, that's, but again, had I stayed off marketplace, I wouldn't be looking for roadmasters all the time. Yep. That's, um, but like I said, market marketplace is the, um, it's the bane of my existence. It's, uh, we transitioned from Craig. I always say Craigslist by mistake all the time too. I'm like, Oh yeah. yeah shopping around on Craigslist. And then, um, you know, they're like, you mean marketplace? I'm like, yes, I'm, I'm, I'm at marketplace, but there's some, uh, that's my love hate relationship with the internet is yeah. I'm, I miss driving around and knocking on random people's doors to buy things. Now, in, in recent years, you um you meet a lot of people that aren't into that. You know, there's nothing like getting backed off a porch with a shotgun and you're on the wrong end of it. And you just kind of, you know, I wasn't trying to waste your time. I was just trying to give you some money, lady. <laughs> it's it's intense out there. What's funny is that Craigslist, you know, I actually started uh, with the Speed Channel in 2005. That was my way into NASCAR from a Craigslist ad. So Craigslist has always had this very special place in my heart and we it's funny craigslist is now it's still really functional i don't know if you ever get fed up of marketplace and you go back to craigslist it's funny because in some ways it's better even though it's a worse interface on every like what like it's the most antiquated thing on the internet but sometimes you can just find ones kind of cut to the chase i see uh tom fellow i i uh, just saw that and i put a yeah, your auto trader years old, Tom. I appreciate that. Hey, Amen, Buying brother. Stuff out of the newspaper was still so much fun. Oh yeah, we had. Um, I'm trying to remember. We had a thing called the Atlanta Advertiser, and it was just classified, stacked up. Now sometimes there was like a little bit of an order to it, but also people would just like throw a frisbee or a dart at it and be like, "I'm going to put my car ad in the music equipment." And so sometimes you'd see something. Like, oh, it's a band van or whatever it was. But uh, yeah, there's so many good ways i ended up you know when the forums internet forums really took off we had like import lounge um import atlanta then there was another one i can't remember the other big one but like i showed up one day and i they had made me a moderator and i was like i didn't want to be a moderator and they're like no you were the guy that would kindly tell people like they'd go to list something and i'd be like hey just heads up if you're saying for sale you know, 94 Toyota Supra, it's really helpful to everyone else if we know like how many miles are on it. Uh, is it running? Uh, is it a manual or automatic? Like I would just be like, hey, could you please help me help you? Yes. And so they made me a moderate, but turns out you didn't, no one wanted to be a moderator because then you feel like you got to like bust up the nerds. But uh, the auto trader, oh man, every week it would come out and you'd get to go, you'd get to look at those pictures. It was funny because it was so cheap. And they had to have been making so much money. It's still a great website for the record if you're looking for something. But that interface was so awesome because you could dream about it. And I, I don't know about you, like, Justin, you grew up. Are you in Ohio? Yeah. So I'm, I'm a, you know, bo uh, born and bred here. Um, yeah. I live about, you know, I grew up about 25 minutes south here of the, uh, the Summit store. So this was, gotcha. yeah, this was like an event, you know, it's fun to sell people the stuff to people out of state because they're like oh we're gonna go to summit racing after this and i'm just like it's worth it go up there absolutely like, it is. I, um, I, always say, to, I don't know like up. were your were your summers like i mowed lawns so i could have money to buy the auto trader so i could think about having enough lawns to be mowed to then afford the 400 hundred dollar car whatever i was looking at like what were what were your early jobs that you were doing so you could try to stack a little cash for one of these things. Uh, so growing up, my, my dad owned a gutter company. So I spent, you know, there was a lot of my earlier youth, you know, helping my dad out doing that kind of stuff. But then same deal. It was, it was all about side hustles. So mowing grass, once I got, you know, started wrenching around probably like that for like 14, 15, 16 year old age, it was, it was fixing other people's stuff. So it was, yes. you know, it was, I needed money by work for working on other people's stuff to fix my own daily driver because well at that time you know it was it was a uh, a daily race car at that I should say race truck it's always kind of a fun I had this two a two wheel drive uh two wheel drive Dodge Dakota and um, Ooh, was that the V6 or V8 V uh, V6 it was um so you know my dad got to pick it out that was the stipulation he's like you know I'll help you get a vehicle but I you know if I'm going to be giving you some money I get to I get to pick what it is sure so um my dad, I come home from school one day and there's a two wheel drive Dodge Dakota in the driveway. And I'm like, Oh, whose jalopy is this? And my dad's like, 
these are your new wheels. And um, <laughs> he's like, it's not for, he's like, it's got a bed. You can haul your four wheeler, but it's not four wheel drive. So you don't get yourself into any situations. Smart move. Well, little did my dad know that I know that ba- Baja trucks are two wheel drive. <laughs> oh, sure. Oh, so sure. you just, it's all about, you just have to hit everything with enough speed and then you will get, get through it. But that was the same deal. It was just like, I would, you know, beat the snot out of the thing. Something yeah. epic would break. And it was like, well, I need to fix, I need to do some tune ups or change oil or ball joints. So I have money to fix my own stuff to drive places, but it was the same deal. I just needed, I didn't care what job I was doing. I would go, you know, throw hay, you know, dig holes, you know, put a fence in just to get, sure. some, just to get some cash. You know, I'm, I'm sure you're the same way. Absolutely. And that be, now keep in mind, was this a, was this one of the square, super square body Dakotas? Oh no, this was a mint. This was like that uh, early two, it was an 04. So that round oh. early two, it was actually, I, I commend my father because it was actually a really nice, it had RT wheels on it. Like, yeah, that was the same. Your dad's crazy. That's too nice to have handed you that truck at that age. Yep. I, um, I laugh <laughs> about it now. Like I, I still say I've owned all sorts of cool stuff and I'm like, that's still the favorite, my, my favorite vehicle I've ever had. It had a ridiculous uh, sound system in it. So you could, you know, Oh, and I um I chopped the exhaust off it and put like a H. I got my hands on an HKS like fart can. And oh, then put there we on. go. It was, it was dialed. It was um it was my favorite. It was great. Here. What I love is that we've come so full circle in car stuff now. I swear the same dudes that have those like eight to <clears throat> ten inch cans on their exhaust now and those gigantic diesels that sound like a dump truck like for the record there was a time when driving a dump truck wasn't that cool and now every bro with a diesel sounds like a dump truck and i'm like all right it's fine but when you're at when you see one and it's sitting at idle and i can hear the blades of the turbine spinning i'm like guys that's too loud for y'all it's too loud for me and then i think were they the ones that were making fun of us when we started messing with imports and we all had the little like, yeah, some of them were, we called it the fart can, the bumblebee. Like, were they the same ones making fun of CRXs running a five inch tip on the back of an exhaust? And now they've got a coffee can for an yep. exhaust. Like, that's, you, can fit, you can fit your longer. head. Now, I, I will say, uh, you know, as I got a little bit older, I became what we refer to as belt buckles. Uh, belt buckle mm. kids you know big diesel truck you got to tuck your pants in your boots like i said it was a fad it was a thing i embraced yeah. it i'm just as guilty but but like you said it's the guys you know that were making fun of the import guys <laughs> are now putting ridiculous exhaust on their diesel trucks and you know it's um when you can hear it when you can hear it and not see it that's um that's that's when it's a problem <laughs> that's a lot uh can i jump over mark jackson what's up mark mark asked if i'm going on the power tour i really hope so um you know, past two years, I, I brought my friends uh, from Toyota Racing to be a part of it because so many of them are, are gearheads, too. And uh, I took my Super out there last year. And it's funny because a lot of people were mildly offended that I would bring a, a Toyota Supra on the Hot Rod Power Tour. And then they saw how fast it was. And they're like, OK, yeah, no, I, I buy that. That totally makes sense. Uh, it's starting in Atlanta, which is super fun. So I think if nothing else, uh, I will definitely be in Atlanta. I might do day two. It kind of depends. I've always tried to get my family to go and they've never really been that stoked about it. But with the blazer, I think I got a shot at it. So I definitely, I know I want to have the blazer at Atlanta Motor Speedway with Summit day one. Um, so, so many people can, can come and see it. I keep trying to, uh, I keep trying to find a good Saturday that I can throw like a mini pop up. Cause I'd love, you know, Justin, when you work on something this much, I really want people to be able to to see it and get up close in it. But the problem is I just took a new job, which is really awesome. And it's funny because I can't tell you a ton about it, except that everyone on this will love it. Uh, and it's going to be a new primetime show for NBC. But I have to go to the UK for the next two months to shoot it. So that really cuts out on that time. But long story short, yes, I'll be on at least part of the Power Tour, Mark. And uh, I want everybody to get to see the Blazer uh up close so we got to do that scott what's up now i just i don't want to leave this hanging first off that 04 man that rt of that truck is still dude the dakotas are are really underrated for a lot of things so i just want to give credit that's a it's stock those wheels those split fives it's, it's it was just a killer setup chef's, right chef's kiss and they came yeah. in so many cool cut like yes uh, actually uh one of my buddies it's um i'm gonna shout you out mitch mitch had yeah. a yellow rt v8 like dakota and the thing was 
gorgeous. It was beautiful. I loved it so much. <clears throat> and no, those Dodge, like I've always, I know there's a lot of Dodge haters out there and I'm like, I said, I'm a, I'm an early body style guy. So like those, um, you know, that 94 to O2. Like, yes. Um, so that for the record, that's my favorite because the Shelby convertible, like first off, the fact that any OEM ever made a convertible pickup that was functional, there was a reason no one else did it because they couldn't look other people in the eye and be like, we made a convertible pickup. You're going to love, like they just, no one else could do that. But turns out they were awesome. They're still cool. They're hard to find. I've seen a couple that were a pretty decent deal, but you and I know if you don't find one that is running and driving and functional, Dude, the amount of money that you spend trying to fix it to just be a crappy car is so much more than people can possibly comprehend. It's insane. Yeah, no, I I drive by like I see stuff like that all the time. Like, so my one my one buddy Logan, his dad has one of those Audi stainless steel, the five cylinder, like the Quattro oh, yeah. wagon, and it's parked like off in the weed. Like Gary's dad drove it for a long time, and they parked it in the weeds. Something I think went wrong with the motor, and I every time I drive by his house, I'm just like, I want it. I wanted to sit in my yard and then I like think about like what it takes to get one of those cars running and like just all the non like big Volkswagen lover and big Audi lover. But uh, um, the, the, the nonsense they got going on under there, it's um, oh, yeah, it's a little bit above uh, above me. What makes me laugh is I don't know about you. My dad does this and I realize I do it with cars, but like my dad's kind of guy who like if something's for sale for ten dollars, he'll look for one that's five but it needs $3 worth of work so he can feel like he's been, I really, you and I, we probably do that same thing with cars. Like I'll find one and be like, well, it's a pretty good deal. Yes. Yeah. The motor let go, but here's the thing. We could just make it a little bit better. And then you're like, yeah, yeah, we'll put a new motor. And then there, and then you're like, well, I mean, you have to upgrade the transmission too to match the motor. Yeah. Obviously. Well then, you know, the, also the rear end won't hold that power. And you're like, yeah, or that running driving one was actually only fifteen hundred dollars more. But I want that's the I just I, I don't know why I'm such a sucker for that. That's what's got me from like the marketplace deals. I'll chase a deal. I'll chase a five hundred dollar car for a week if I have to, and then you get it and you're like, oh, it's a three hundred dollar car all day. What was I thinking? Like, <laughs> yeah, I am. Um, that's one of the biggest questions. Am I am the <clears throat> advocate of driving five hundred dollar vehicles? Like, um, you know my. As, as my mother likes to say, my morals are really wild because I go and take a, you know, I have a brand new fancy dirt bike because you have to, you know, you have to have something nice. And oh, yeah. I put it in the back of my $500 pickup truck with a smile on my face. <laughs> and I'm just like, yeah, I don't know if it's going to, I was like, if the truck breaks down, you just unload the bike and you ride it the rest of the way. Absolutely. That's brilliant. I mean, no, there's nothing bad at, at all. Uh, can I say hey to John, who's from uh, Prince Albert, Saskatchewan, Canada? Oh, we it's love not, it. We love those Canadian, Canadian folks up there. Can Canada. Canada's there's actually have you seen there's a guy in Canada right now riding an ATC three wheeler from one coast. He started all the way at the left. I'm sorry, I don't know what that is. I don't know what the, British Columbia. Uh, my bad. I'm not up to up on my uh, Canadian provinces. Love it. Love it. So started <clears throat> all the way at the left and is riding all the way to the right. And um, that's got, impressive. I know he got caught up. I believe it was in. Um, it's the one that starts with the no, my bad guys, but um, got caught up on. there somewhere in the middle okay. <clears> and, uh, and he's making his way across the rest of the way. But I'm fo- like, I follow him on TikTok. It, it just kind of wild. Like, so we said Canada and I had to bring that up, but to ride and you know, it's cold there. So to ride right. in eighties Honda trike all the way across is, is um, Ontario. Thank you, Pete. I'm, I appreciate you so much. Yes, Ontario. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I would not. The one with the O? Yeah, I would not yeah. be a good Canadian citizen. <laughs> <laughs> that's first off. That's that's so hardcore. Second, um, John. I hope you watch Letterkenny or Shorzy. Those are my favorite Canadian oh, shows I, out there. Ca- Canadian sitcoms, or that's that's um that's between that and Trailer Park Boys. I can yeah. I can just giggle and giggle. Shorzy was, like I said, that that show is just fantastic. Uh, I it's, love that very much. Oh, we so got good. Mark Jackson coming at us with the uh, Oh Canada. Heck yeah, Mark. Oh, that's right. Scott asked uh, if I still have my purple fundra. So I built, um, also with Summit, I built a supercharged uh, 2016 Toyota Tundra TRD Pro. Now, I I built a four-wheel drive that I lowered, and I realized why some people have an issue with that. But the reason I got the idea 
Tanner Faust that I did Top Gear with, and you all know Adam Farrar too. So Tanner used to be sponsored by Toyota, and when he was, um, he had a Magnuson supercharged uh, Tundra, and he put it in four-wheel drive high once, and we left a traffic light in L.A., and all four tires were smoking. And I was like, well, this, this is what I want. So it took me a few years, but I built this purple one we called the Fundra, and it had a, a wide-body Honey D um, kit. And we wrapped it first to look like Ivan Stewart's Iron Man truck. And I love that. We took it on the power tour. Then Magnuson, we sent it out there. They supercharged it. Love them. They make such cool stuff. Brought it back and then um, changed some wheels, had rotiforms on there, took it on the hot rod power tour. And I love that thing. But during the pandemic, somebody asked if they could buy it during 2020 it was one of those weird times where a lot of us were like, I don't know if I'll ever work again. I, yeah, if someone wants to buy something, everything's for sale. I got kids. So I sold it. And then it was one of those weird things where I told the guy, because I had it specialty tuned, you had to like hold traction control down for like five seconds and take it off. Then you put it again for another five seconds. It would turn everything off. And it was a rocket ship. However... You know, Justin, sometimes your friends might have like a piggyback to right? There are certain procedures, right? Like you've got to, you got to follow the list of things. Well, this cat that I sold it to, he thought that was stupid. And I was like, you got to do it every time. So he, he basically blew it up on the way home because the truck, if you didn't do that, would go into this like panic threshold and it would suddenly cut fuel to half the cylinders. So it sounds like you're blowing it up. Well, I have to believe that if you're hard enough on the accelerator, trying to get that back to Chicago or wherever. I think the dude grenaded it. And then it's this weird dance where like, I'm in a place where I can't sell anything because people act like a jerk if I do, because they either act like, well, you, I shouldn't pay you anything because you work in the industry. I'm like, y'all, I paid for this stuff. I just, I've just tried to buy another crappy thing to fix up. So it was one of these weird dances where I tried to get him a motor and then that I don't know if they ever put it. So I don't actually know what happened to it, but I saw it recently it seems like it's doing well. I would bet good money. It's still in the original engine and I got suckered to giving them money back, but that's just me. You know, you got to yeah, choose I, your battles. You go, you win some and you lose some. It's um, there is um, I've bought a lot of car, like, like my Civic. Mike, I have a, a 98 civic. I love the car. The thing is yes. just, it was cherry. It was a grandma car when I got it. it like it got drove to the grocery store and that was it, but Four it was door? a, it was a non runner. So it was, so she was cheap. And it would show up, put a distributor in it, start it, and then drive it home. And, like, you feel bad. You're like, ah, uh, it was a $50 fix. And, you know. Right. But that's that's but, all the part about the deals. Like, that's that's how you get deals. Did but, you save you, the HKS can from that Dakota to put on this Civic? Because that would really come in handy. Dude, that is that is full circle. I That's actually a pretty good idea. I was actually just complaining about the Civic because the exhaust got ripped off it. Um, sure. So I jabronied it back on the car. Um, I let my mother drive the Civic because I love her. She was like, oh, she needed, I think I was borrowing her car. And I was like, oh, you can drive my beautiful 1998 Honda Civic. She drives it one day, rips the exhaust all the way off it. And then is, you know, calling me, saying some very choice words. Bless, <laughs> but we, we refer to my mom as J-Lo. Bless that woman's heart. Um, hey, mom. Yeah, I appreciate her not giving up on me because I, I would have just, you know, chuck the towel in a long time ago. But um, I was just complaining because I ripped the exhaust, so I won't drive it because it's loud. I'm like, I sure. can't. 15-year-old me want to cut it off the day I got it. 28-year-old me is like, this is too loud. It needs right. an exhaust. I want to enjoy my, you know, put my driving gloves on, put a little Barry Manilow on the radio and just have a nice cruise to work. <laughs> there's, dude, there's a funny, there's a funny transition where I feel like anyone watching this or listening knows like, there's that point where you're like, all right, needs a really loud stereo and a super loud exhaust. And then you're like, okay, well, it needs a decent stereo, still needs a good exhaust. And one day you're like, you know, do you have a, a high flow exhaust that's not that loud? And then Magnaflow is like, we got you, bro. No drone technology. We'll make anything you want. We'll get you power, but it's not going to make your ears bleed. And when I, there are times, there used to be this cat that lived near us that had straight pipes on a, like a Z71. And it, to me, 
it sounded so bad that I was like, number one, I know he's losing power. Like there was no back pressure was all jacked up. Everything about it just sounded so bad. And I thought I'm concerned as a dad for your ears. And I kind of wanted to be like, Hey man, um, I have some mufflers that came off another project. Do you, do you want something that's going to like sound good? And then I was like, I can't do that. I mean, that's, I'm, I'm like leading the horse to water. And then I'm going to hold its head under to take a drink. I can't. Yes. Can't I am. Um, I had a neighbor buy me a muffler in high school and set it on my parents' porch. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I came, you know, came home and there's just a, 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 a thrush muffler sitting there and it's just like, okay, I get it. Or I, do you remember, I got brand new glass packs for Christmas oh, one year yeah. and I was so excited and, um, you know, it takes a while to burn all the stuff out of the glass pack. So then I'm like on the back porch and, you know, this doesn't sound very safe and I would never do this now. But like I'm pouring like gasoline inside the glass packs and lighting them on a fire. To, to you burn. tried to accelerate the process yourself. Because yes. <laughs> like, oh, as we, we'd like to say, I was like, oh, it has to have that hillbilly crackle. It just got oh, you got to get that. Diesel. <laughs> wow. Justin, we would have been friends in high school. I'll tell you right now. It, that would have been. Gosh, isn't that funny when you hear like there's towns where people are like, oh, they're stealing the catalytic converters. Meanwhile, you and I know people are like, steal them? Hell, I took that off years ago. You're like, oh, gosh. <laughs> like you're what like, it's, it's wild. The world, you know, it's, it's wild how the world works now. But same deal. It's like, it's funny how we go from driving <laughs> loud, obnoxious, very identifiable vehicles to like, I need something that nobody knows. I Like you buy something, you're like, I'm not telling anybody I bought this. So I have like the spy car is uh, like right. what we refer to them as. But That's it's the awesome. same, just like you were saying, same deal. I have, have blessed this kid's heart in my hometown. He has a Subaru, and I don't know where the exhaust is cut off on it, but it is non-existent, and it's it pops and cracks and does. And I just like, I just want to help you put a full exhaust on your car, buddy. Put a muffler. Right. It, it sound better with a muffler. I'm not hating. I'm a car no. guy. I like loud stuff, but I don't like loud stuff at five thirty in the morning. <laughs> That's fair. Can I say hi to Charlie? He said that. Um, my family and I met Rut in New Hampshire when they were filming Top Gear and they were very kind to my daughter. Um, great experience. What's up, Charlie? Hey, how's it going? I wonder, um, she's in college now and works for a car museum. That doesn't make me feel old at all to think that I met your daughter when she was a child. Now she's in college. That was seamless. Uh, I'm just kidding. No, it's, it's funny. You know, I started doing NASCAR in 2015 for the Speed Channel. And which is owned by Fox. So I worked for Fox for 10 years and Top Gear found me doing that from a race fan that loaded this video onto YouTube illegally uh, that I interviewed John Schneider from the Dukes of Hazard while riding around Atlanta Motor Speedway uh, in a Dodge Charger yes. paying up to look like the General Lee. We end up doing Top Gear. And, you know, the people that I met from that, it's just been such a cool thing because sometimes it was like, you know, it might be a, a husband and wife watching Top Gear and the wife would watch because she realized it's just about three idiots. Turns out it is. There's some cars in there, too. But it's really just about these three idiots on adventures. And now so many of those people's kids know me from doing Floor is Lava on Netflix or Hyperdrive, any of the other things I've done over there. It's just a really funny thing. I hosted an electric car race in my daughter's uh, elementary school this morning. It's like the fifth or sixth year in a row I've done it. And the amount of kids that know me from Floor is Lava is, I mean, it's like a 97%, right? Every kid there knows it. And then someone's like, how do you know so much about cars? And I kind of laughed. I was like, that's, well, that's what I do. Like, that's yep. funny, kind of built funny a career question. in it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And that's like the, the wild part. And I always kind of like it's a it's a pinch me thing where I'm like, I when you get to make your hobby your everyday job and you know you don't we're we're truly blessed individuals to, you know, I, I get to wake up and go do car stuff every day. And you know, if you would have told 18 year old me that was just a tech, you know, just slaving away, that that was gonna, you know, 10 years from now, you're gonna be making YouTube videos and doing this stuff for a really cool company like Summit. I would have told you you were crazy. Absolutely. But, yeah, but it's um, it's it's fun, and it's the whole getting the kids thing involved, like you know, I I appreciate like I like that, like when I see you know, it's those 15, 16 year olds, you know, doing the same thing we were doing, you know, buying piece of junk vehicles, and you're you know mowing grass, investing money, getting into it, and that's what's keeping the hobby alive. So um, I try to spread that that love as much as I can. You're doing a great job with it, man. You really are. Um, Scott asked, 
Hey, I heard you were thinking about doing a giveaway uh, with the Jeep. I built the Jeep. I got a ton of stuff from Summit on that one. It's a, it was a junkyard Wrangler that I pulled out. It had been in my buddy's junkyard for like 10 years. And man, was it gross. They also, I say they, we found some narcotics in the console that I had to call my friends that are police officers to come get. Dude, it was the weirdest. I looked and I was like, I don't think i want to touch this i'm gonna call the cops uh so it was really really fun but yeah there was there was a time period where i thought hey wouldn't it be cool if i could give this away and then i got to a place where i looked in like how do you do that because there's a legal side anytime when you see like uh my buddy cletus who does giveaways or anybody else you know some of the uh it's an interesting dance right sometimes people do it and it seems like totally cool and on the up and up and then there's other times when you're like this just something feels weird here and i didn't want to get caught in that space at all and i didn't you know if i give something away number one i have to make sure it's safe enough to give away i started to do that with this Datsun 510 and then i got underneath it and i was like no i need to i need to sell this to someone who knows what this is there's no gray area like i don't want a 16 year old driving this thing around so i very much want to do some fun giveaways it's just a weird thing where you have to make sure that it's not a total piece of garbage yep uh number one and number two like can i do it in a way that's fair and everybody has a shot and whatever and so that's a you know i'm just so lucky to get to play with cars every day and go have fun with my friends i also don't uh i don't ever want that to be something that's a detractor So I really like, I want to build something for the purpose and with friends and sponsors and say, yes, let's build something to give away that will make someone's life better. Not like to you and I, it'd be great, but we don't want to burden, you know, we don't want to burden someone that isn't Justin or I with some big hunk of junk. So yes, uh, Scott, I really appreciate that support. Thank you for following. I hope we get to uh, get to do that. Yeah. I tell like, I tell people all the time, like I, me driving something that's day you know that's not necessarily in the greatest operating condition down the road is one thing i would never put somebody else behind like there's things where i'm like i'm not gonna let somebody else drive this like this is a death trap like (laughs) but that's like that's my form of gambling like i joke all the time like i'm not into playing with cards i want to go do fun stuff in the garage it's you know morally morally questionable to some individuals (laughs) right absolutely there's that line. There's the line between silly and stupid is a thin one. We always want to make sure we're on the right side of that. Alan asked uh, if I'm going to stop by one of the Monday night cruises uh, at Summit in McDonough. Yes, absolutely. Assuming it is post April because uh, I'll be gone for a little while. But man, I'd love for you to get to come check out the Blazer uh, and get to show it off there. My friends at Summit, I feel like they have my poster on the wall because I'm such a frequent traveler. Uh, to mcdonough which is a uh, a great time so yeah i hope i can get down there so you said uh, you're in georgia you're rich now you're originally now uh alabama correct um, grew up in birmingham right? and then we moved over here when i was 15 uh and been here ever since so um yeah man when they when they broke ground for the mcdonough summit racing i was like oh how lucky have i gotten it's close to the interstate it's less than an hour away and i've done that thing where you're like what time is it can we make it yeah yeah yep. like that's oh we are so fortunate for that but also let's be honest the shipping's incredibly fast uh, yeah so i've always loved it any way you cut it yeah it is nice that you know <clears throat> you can order the stuff if you order it you know we, we like to say before nine o'clock it's going to ship the same day and 99 percent of situations that does and you know you have it we have four stores around the united states so you're going to have it within a couple of days like it's um yeah it, it's really convenient that's um Can't. It is fun. Like I said, these stores are kind of a destination for people, which I always appreciate. It's, um, you know, if you've never, if you guys are ever even within an hour or a couple hours, you know, you can swing by on a vacation and check out a summit store. I highly recommend it. It's, um, you know, all, all four locations are, are beautiful. There's always cool stuff on the turntables in the front of the store. Like, it's an ex- it's a destination. It's an experience. Absolutely, they're like the Bucky's of the automotive parts world. You know, if yes. you've not been to a to a Bucky's, I heard about Wally's this weekend, which I guess is a like uh, uh, American vacation uh, themed Wally World sort of thing. I think that's awesome. I am um, I am very so I'm very interested. And that, that's one of the cool parts. So we have the Christmas Story House up in Cleveland, like an hour oh, yeah, north of yeah. So um. 
it's that's like kind of um i have a december birthday so it's kind of like one of the fun things you know you, you go up there and you can you know walk through the house see all the cool memorabilia it's actually it's for it's been for sale for a little bit i, I can't believe no one's bought it yet if yeah. um if i had a bucket of money i would be living in the christmas story house that would be my goal <laughs> absolutely think of the tours that you could give but just like a knock on the door and i'll show you the house for 20 bucks like zero prep tour that was that's what i yeah. would say well we have another guy like by us that decorates his house like the griswold house does all the lights parks a it parks a junky rv out in front of the hat like does the full, full potatoes i love i love stuff like that that's um i um you know fun houses like that and that the, those little brown signs you see on the highway, like world's largest ball of yarn and that cut, like I see one of those. I'm all, I'm going like, it did you know, here's a is. little trivia. Did you know in the U S there are two of the world's largest ball of twine, but there's one defining characteristic that's different. Tell me more. So I know, right. You're in, yes, I mentioned. <laughs> so apparently one has a cover over it, like a, like a lean to shed roof and the other does not. So they're like, we're the world's largest, non-enclosed <laughs> ball of twine and the others like we are the world's largest ball of twine with a roof like they're awesome so different but yeah that stuff happens can i answer another question josh jones is over there what's up josh uh he asked i ever finished the corolla for my daughter what color did you choose great question yes um it's funny because i ordered the new gr corolla which will hopefully be here in a couple months so it's the all-wheel drive 300 horsepower like basically rally car so my Corolla hatchback that I had, it was a former SEMA project for Toyota. And I think they gave five of them to these different tuner shops. And so this one was kind of built as like a, um, a Hachi, like an AE86 tribute car. Uh, crazy loud exhaust. It was dumped on the ground. It was like a flat gray, like almost primer gray wrap. And so I let my daughter choose a bunch of different colors and then stuff that she liked wheels, whatever. So at one point I lifted it, put knobby tires on there and a big like roof rack. It was like, kind of like the guy with the Subaru in your town. I was trying to do something fun. Uh, but then when I realized the GR is all wheel drive and actually would be great off road, I went, Oh, okay. So I will take that stuff off. I let fans on my Instagram choose which way we went. So they ended up going with uh, it's like a cool metallic rose gold. The roof is still black. Uh, it's got cast uh, rotiforms on there, which look great. Continental tires. Magnaflow made me a custom exhaust with this cool uh, Corolla shop that's in Atlanta on the north side of town. I can't think of their name right now, but they're awesome. They're on my Instagram. Uh, and then we changed the front end to look like a different model Corolla. The hatchback has like a unique one, kind of like for civic nerds like us, the old like EG sedan bumpers were different than the coupe bumpers it's kind of like that so it's i changed subtle, to... it's those subtle little details that no one ever notices and you're just like well this this is Volks volkswagens are the same way it's yes. um you know it's those little odds and ends I, <coughs> <coughs> oh excuse me it's kind Big of bumper like, small bumper you remember yeah, you get those guys where it was like well with this particular build sheet this this car is one you know one of one or one of, you know, so I always, I enjoy that. I kind of poke fun at it a little bit, but it's, um, that was, I would envy someone that got to, you know, order. I owned a 78 grand marquee for a while. Big lot car oh. was, um, it was, it was, we called it Nessie. It was seafoam green. It was, it was gorgeous. I, I loved the thing. Was it named after Nessie, the Loch Ness monster? It's, it had a small correlation. Yes. <laughs> I'm so glad. But, Sorry, um, go ahead that you know i got it from the the original you know original owner and it was cool you know they ordered every option except a passenger side mirror and a cassette player so oh, it had you know it had a big block it had the crazy green leather interior which we only know what they had to feed the cows to make them that color <laughs> but um, it had all these crazy like I said options you're like this thing is just laid out and so I just had to think about this, you know, at the time she wasn't a little old lady, but just sitting there checking all the boxes. Right. Like, and it's just same with that. Um, I don't know if you've seen that Haggerty video, that cool chart, that cool uh, Hemi uh, Challenger, like four yes. speed. It has an alligator top on it. Yeah. But same deal, like ordering a car like that, then that was just with these couple high end options, you know, it turns the thing into something truly unique. And, um, I know. I think it'd be. I, it's kind of sad that that's went away, and uh, you don't get to do that much anymore. 
I know. And, and, and I, I didn't know until I owned, so I owned a 70 Dodge charger that I got from my friend Kyle Petty. It was his car in high school. He bought it from his uncle. Um, and Kyle had it, sold it when he got married, bought it back like 20 something years later, his son, Austin ended up with it. Austin fixed up. It was a 383 with a four speed pistol grip car. So fun. I got the car. Um, and it was probably six years ago. Well, I sent it to Ride Tech to help them get, get some help from them on the suspension because I didn't know where to start. Like, you know, Mopars, I realized like we kind of characterize Mopar people as being like a little bit different because they're pretty intense. They really love their stuff. Well, it was the reason is like there were less Mopars made. If you look at Camaro or Mustang or anything else, whatever the equivalent is, there were less of them made. So number one, there was less out there. That meant there was less parts, less people customizing. So the people that really loved them were just like so enamored that that really became their thing, right? The best part for me of that car is they called and said, uh, hey, who lowered this thing? And I was like, oh, a uh, 14 year old named Kyle Petty in 1978 or whatever it was, 676. And they're like, it looks like an old race car underneath here. And I was like, oh, oh, no, it is. Because Richard Petty never threw anything out. They just used old stuff from the race cars on this car. And he's like, yeah, dude, it's car like looking at the front end. It really was set up like a stock car. And I was like, oh, dude, pull the gear out of the rear end. Kyle said that he was racing someone once on a highway before they opened it. And this was in like Level Cross. I can't remember what the name of the highway was. It's going toward Ashboro, I think. And Kyle said they're racing. This is before they opened the highway. And this guy's in a Trans Am and thinks he's got him. And Kyle smiles and pulls. They're doing 110 or something. And Kyle goes from third gear to fourth gear and left the dude. And he's like, yeah, dude, we just had the King's old stuff in here. Was a cup gear, like wherever. And I went, wow, that's that's where all the cool Mopar stuff went. Okay, there it is. Yep, It's all. And like just like you said, I, I feel for the Mopar guys because <laughs> of the less – so, you know, they're almost all, uni they're all unibody cars. So, you know, time, time is not kind to them, unfortunately. Right. But if you crash, you know, if you crash one of those cars, they bend in weird ways because of the torsion bars and they're kind of, you know, they're thin from the factory and not a lot of parts. Like they only built, I like, it's a mind blowing number. So 426 Hemis, there's only, I think 13 or four, like it's like 13 or 14,000 ever built. And think Insane. about how many of those got blown up, you know, on, on drag, you know in the birth of drag racing essentially and so those guys if you're restoring a numbers matching high dollar mopar car you're gonna spend you're gonna spend some money absolutely so, my my buddy brian from brian's paint and body down here by me uh is a huge mopar guy he goes to all the shows like he's always got his stuff for sale whatever but every time he goes to the show he ends up bringing more stuff home than he started with i i identify with that problem <laughs> It's, you understand I, I get rid of one like i get rid of one thing so i can get two more is kind of yeah i always like joke if you know if something ever unfortunately happened to me you know if um if you clean up all the stuff around my parents property you probably get seven eight grand worth of scrap if you took the time i tell my friends you know, just help my mom catalog this stuff she can retire there's a couple hundred thousand dollars here <laughs> right it's just crazy that that's and I think that's also part of what will keep you and I still knocking on doors and, and leaving notes on cars. There's so many stories to me. And I, that's what I think every time I walk around a junkyard, I think, man, who owned this? How did this car get here? What kind of life did it have? And I think that story for me, that's one of those things that like, that's why I love patina so much. I, it tells this story of where this thing has been in the history of it. And that's one of those things that I always kind of come back to is like, you know, when you see a super bird in incredible shape, man, it makes your heart really happy. But when I saw, I was at the Indy 500 and I saw the, the winged warriors club was having a meeting at the mug and bun. And I saw this old super bird that the tops hanging off, like it was a vinyl top. It's ragged out. It looks like the car from Joe Dirt, and I couldn't look away. Like that, that's a car that I would own today, and I wouldn't touch a thing. I, I'd make sure the brakes work, make sure everything's healthy, and I would drive the absolute crap out of it because that yeah. to me is what makes it so special, you know? 
So that's kind of like was our big joke at SEMA. I, I'm not sure if you attended or not, but outside the outside the West Hall, you know, that's they line up all those tr- like you have all those trucks outside, and you know you have brand new you know one ton diesel trucks, and it's lifted, and it's got all this crazy suspension underneath it, and there's the whole row of them sitting on the sidewalk in front of the building was a minty all stock Grand Wagoneer. And I could stare at the, uh, the trucks I had no interest in or like, you know, the cool Porsches and stuff sitting outside. You're like, I have no desire to look at that. I want to look at this stock Wagoneer sitting on the sidewalk because this is cool. <laughs> yeah. Now that was, was that the same one? I think there was one there that had a trail. Uh, uh, I mean, a, uh, um, what was the Hawk? What do they call that one? A tra- oh, trail Hawk. Yeah, there was one. Wait, or is that it? No, Trackhawk. There's one yeah. that someone stuffed a Trackhawk set up underneath, but it still looks like an original. Yeah, one I know it was, it was. It was white. It was sitting out, like sitting on the sidewalk. Is the hood wasn't open or anything, but the thing was just gorgeous. Like I, that's that's the kind of stuff that, ex- or like you said, patina, rusty stuff. Like after I buy a vehicle and I get it home and I'm like cleaning it out. The stuff you find, like you were saying, you know, you had you found something very interesting, but yep. you know, the air fresheners or the receipts or <clears throat> sorry, you pop the back seat out of it and you know you're cleaning out. Like think about all the cool, like the cool stuff somebody if they if the car could talk, the stories it could tell. It'd be amazing, man. It yeah, would I, absolutely be amazing. Yeah. And so where besides going and filming this, you know, you, you said you have a new project you're going to be working on. Um, do you have anything else? Cool? You know, you're building the blazer. You still have the pan. You still have the panel van. Um, I sold the, the, the very first one that I built that people would have seen on lost in transmission that I built with summit. I sold that one. And then I think it was Jim that works at the home office at summit had one that is um, from the Beaver park Marina. I bought that from him and then I built it. It's got a uh, charger SRT8 swap underneath their custom built uh, S10 frame that we cut and stretched and everything. That's uh, That was built to Kenwood Rod Shop. Still have it. I love it. I thought about selling it, but man, it just puts a smile on my face every time I drive it. And then uh, I traded that Jeep that we were talking about earlier uh, to Randy from Kenwood for a 56 Ford F100 project that I will eventually get to. Uh, do some fun stuff with it. I mean, the problem is the Ring Brothers keep making stuff that's so cool. I can't, I can't process it. So I'm like, man, maybe I, maybe I don't need fenders, right? <laughs> I wish I could operate on that. Like seeing some of the cool pro. Like so, when it comes to garage work, that's where I fall short compared to like my dad or like my grandfather. It was, yeah. I have to write something down and put it on a piece of paper, and then it's going to take me three times the amount of material to build it they have that ability to just be like, Oh, I have this picture in my head and I'm going to make it out of this flat piece of steel. And it's going to be, I was building a switch box for one of my Volkswagen rails. And um, I had went zero for two. And then my dad just comes out in the garage and he goes, Oh, this, this will be great. And 20 minutes later, I have this beautiful like switch box and I'm just like, how do you do that? How? Yeah. Isn't that amazing? I just, that's once I, I envy that skill so much. It's, um, you know, I'm really good at, you know, wasting material though. My scrap bin is just absolutely, you know, <laughs> you and me both. It turns out we got to make a lot of scrap to get as good at something like that. Like your pops is like, that's, that's a beautiful thing, man. Um, yeah. I'm trying to think before I got to run. Cause I have another, I have another fun call. I get to go prep for all this, this new show. Um, man, that we buzzed through that hour fast. <laughs> that was a, that was a good one. Yeah. Thank you guys for all the great questions. Um, yeah. I think, I think the Roadmaster, here's the tough thing. This Roadmaster wagon that I just got back, the 96, my buddy Dax Shepard has what I think is the greatest Roadmaster out there right now. Uh, His has an LSA in there and uh, supercharged. I drove it and I told him he needed to put in a gearbox, like what's in the CTSV wagon that I have. I think he needs something like that. It needed needed a little bit faster shifting. The problem is that's going to mess with my head and it'll make me want to make mine fast so i don't know i don't know what i'm gonna do with that but um i also have a mystery car coming from japan that at some point i will share pictures of you'll you'll enjoy it it'll be I, it'll be a great i've been looking at japanese mini trucks lately that's that has been a duncan duncan imports i was ta- talking yep. to gary last night over email I'm just uh, like, there's six, also 6500 bucks that's that's not that bad you just Dude, like you're just crazy. like i can drive i was like 
think about all the places I could drive this. <laughs> Absolutely. You can fit it anywhere. Drive it on a golf course. Uh, but Gary's a, an awesome one. There's a ton of great ones out there. Uh, Japanese classics is another great one. But Gary Duncan uh, in Christiansburg, Virginia, is an awesome guy. He's got some incredible stuff. And that's just, again, if you're on a road trip, go to Summit. Go by Gary's place. Go check out some cool stuff. But yeah, hopefully everybody can keep up with me on uh, Instagram and on Facebook. And, uh, and you'll get to see more fun stuff. But yeah, thank you. Big thanks, Justin, for having me and Summit for all the great things we get to do together. I'm so excited for everyone to get to see the Blazer. And I'm going to shoot a big reveal video of it this weekend that we'll, I'll post sometime while I'm in the UK, UK and then we'll get showed off to people at McDonough sometime soon. Heck yeah, sounds good. Well, I appreciate you coming on Rutledge and, you know, just, you know, we just, we just, shot shop the whole time so that's a lot I of love fun it. and Let's yeah I, I really appreciate that so we can't wait to see what you have coming up like i said make sure to follow along on his channels guys and um you know follow along here on summitracing.com and um you know our youtube instagram oh it looks like i had one last comment come through through here for carmen can oh, we great. see please say hi to my son carter Hi, oh, Carter. Carter. Yeah. Carter, what's up, buddy? Thanks for watching. Yeah, we appreciate that. You know, we got to get those young guys involved. So Absolutely. until next time, we'll see you guys later. Have fun, make good choices, and don't talk to strangers. We'll see you guys later. <laughs>